Hi guys, Mel the Train Tutor here again with a product overview. And in this product overview, we're looking at the two-part epoxy resin Envirotex. Now, this was a suggestion from Micah Teresinix. Now, I've used two, various two-part resins in the past, but from what I've sort of learned from playing with this, it's an excellent resin. So I want to show you what you can sort of do and give you some considerations if you're going to use it. Uh, Price-wise, it's a little bit more expensive than a lot of the other products out there, but that saying, what you call it, it is damn good. Okay, and it's got a lot of different applications. I mean, we use it in terrain, obviously, but it's used a lot in jewelry making, in uh, table making, and furniture. This stuff is food safe, it's uh, temperature resistant to a certain extent. And so, what you call it? You see a lot of tabletops being made of it or being coated with it. Uh, a lot of jewelry's made with it. It can be used for like sealing insects and all that sort of stuff. Now, just showing you the sort of stuff I've been playing around with. Okay, uh, this is a Envirotex door. Okay, and as you can see, it's quite tough stuff. Okay, uh, this. I don't want to break this because I want to save it. But if I get one of these pieces, you know. You can't break the damp stuff when it's what you call it when it's poured. These were actually poured into a little they were a Thornton's chocolate base sort of tray. Yeah, but on this one I was just sort of testing the various tints and stuff. Yeah, and that one's gone a little bit more flexible because the mix has gone off. But anyway, I digress. Yeah. So what am I going to cover in this session? Well, dead simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to mix up watch it in Viotex. I'm going to talk about the safety considerations. I'm going to talk you through various bits of troubleshooting and how to get rid of bubbles, etc. Yeah, so I'll need that straw. Yeah, and then once we've gone through all that, I'll show you the various tinting and using sort of tints and then opaque pigments. Yeah, to get various effects with it. And then finally, what I'll do is at the end, we will do a very quick application onto this. Yeah. And we'll turn this into sort of a, a murky pond. OK, so you're going to get a, a very good overview for what you have in Viotex as a product and also it's a practical application in terrain building. So shall we crack on? Right. Straight off the top. Safety first, guys. OK, straight off, I'm wearing gloves. Yeah, they do recommend to wear gloves. A lot of people say that you don't need them. Yeah, but I found it when I got this stuff on my skin, I got quite an irritation from it. And I don't want that again. So I'll be wearing gloves and doing my best customs and excise impression. Good afternoon. Would you let you assume the position, sir? So another thing. Now, you know my sort of point on safety and, and what I consider, you know, I, I say a lot of common sense. There's not many products we use in the hobby industry that come that have the word fatal in the warning. Treat this stuff with respect. Do not eat it. Do not get it in your eyes. OK. Above all, when this is mixed, it will give off vapors. Well, you'll see the bubbles form. Yeah. Do not breathe them in. They're really bad for you. I'm in a really well vented area. I'm not using massive amounts of this. You know, to be truthful, I'm freezing because the windows are open. But, you know, it's better than breathing this stuff in. So be aware, guys. Listen, gloves and, you know, whether it irritates your skin is one thing. This thing will really mess up your lungs. So be aware. So that's the safety points aside. Yeah, now mixing it up is dead simple. Plastic container and one with measures on the side. OK, in milliliters or whatever you want to measure it in. Yeah, measure it in chicken eggs for all I care, as long as you get the measurements right. And you do have to be right with this stuff. If you go off, it won't work. It'll turn it either like a sludge or like like a rubber. OK, now it is a one to one mix. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to get my resin. Yeah, And very quickly, I'm going to pour this in and I'm going, probably going to pour about 35 mils of it. Yeah, for this. So in we go. So I'm coming up to the 30 mark. Ah, there we go. So very quickly, I've got baby wipes here. Yeah. 
and baby wipes are really good when you're working with resin because resin doesn't clean with soap and water okay it requires alcohol as its solvent to get rid of it and luckily baby wipes have alcohol in them a, a trace amount but they've got alcohol in them and it works great so very quickly put that lid back on and then in this one what I've got is my hardener now I should say that I've warmed both of these up in hot water basically the, the sort of temperature is bearable but you wouldn't keep your hand in it too long okay and the idea is that they're quite thick when you first get them yeah very very thick now if you notice that sliding down the I don't you can't even see it never mind guys but basically you know when at room temperature they're quite thick and what we want them is a thin mix and the reason for that is that it helps with the mixing process but also the thinner they are yeah the easier it is for the air bubbles that are generated by the chemical reaction of these two going to get moving up and escaping and that's especially more important when we actually apply it into molds and onto terrain and apply it because what can happen is if you apply it too deeply and the stuff is too thick yeah you'll get lots of little air bubbles trapped at the bottom with it and it'll give you a misting effect very much like that it's not perfectly crystal clear you know and you've got to stare closely but there's t lots and lots of tiny little bubbles in there so we're going to add our hardener now and I'm going to add exactly the same and then a tiny little smidgen more and the reason for this is I'm going to be putting what you call it various inks and paints into this mix okay to show you what we're doing and that's going to sort of mix it down a bit yeah, and you end up with a slightly more flexible piece, but by including just a tiny little bit more hardener into the mix, yeah, you sort of counter that. Yeah, so I'm going to go probably, I'm going to add 36 millilitres of hardener. Do, do, do. It should take us just over the 70 mark. And it's already kicking off fumes, guys. Listen, I am not going to put my head over this because it is not funny stuff. Now, oh, there's a fair amount in there. That should do for all these. Okay, do not stick your head over that as it's giving off fumes. If I bring it up to the camera, you can see it's already starting to form bubbles. And what you've got now is two different liquids. Yeah, the hardener's more jelly, to be true, for us, the, the resin that's more jelly. No, it's the hardener. Yeah. And then all we're going to do is we're going to mix them thoroughly for two minutes. Okay. And as we mix them, the first thing that will happen is it'll stiffen up and it'll go cloudy. Yeah. And that cloudy is lots and lots of tiny little gas bubbles forming in the mix as the, the chemical reaction goes on. Yeah. And then over time, what will happen is those little bubbles will start to join together. And they will make bigger bubbles. And as they make bigger bubbles, yeah, it will go clearer and thinner again. And that's when you know it's mixed. They recommend two to three minutes mixing this. You've got a working time probably. I find working time for general stuff is about 15 minutes. If you're doing very small castings and that sort of stuff, you want it as liquidy as possible. So, you know, your working time is a lot less. Okay, there we go. And there you are, guys. You can start to see it's gone clear and there is a load of bubbles forming in it. Okay, and like I say, that's the gas giving off. Okay, so the next job is straight away, what I've got here is some castle molds. Yeah, uh, Hearst Arts molds. And these are used for making funky stuff like this. Okay. Yeah, you cast bricks in them with plaster and hydrocal and crystal and stuff like that. And then for making dungeon pieces and brick walls and buildings and all sorts of stuff. And there's tons of different moulds, futuristic ones, Egyptian ones. But I've got a range of these, yeah, that I use for making sort of uh, Dungeons and Dragons and Hero Quest stuff. 
OK, but they're also great for resin because this stuff does not stick to silicon. Yeah, so what I'm going to do very quickly before we start mixing anything else is I'm going to pour in a piece in there so you can see what the, the pure Envirotex pour looks like. OK. I'm not being particularly even with this. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is very quickly pour a load from there into there. Yeah, because we're going to be using that in a different, what you call it, when we do the pigments and stuff. Yeah, but now I want to show you tints. Okay, so we've got a reasonable amount left. We've got a mold. And what I've got here is I've got Casting Craft, what you call it, Transparent Resin Dye. For polyester resin, so this is a polyester resin, but this is the manufacturer's dye. Okay, now you can use lots of other dyes, and I'll show you that further on in the video. Okay, let me just bring this forward so you can see that better. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add one drop. Yeah, and that's just, a, in fact, I'll do two for a reasonable tint. Yeah, and then what we'll do is we'll give it a stir. There's no reason why I can't use that one. Yeah, and we're going to give it a nice good stir and get it all in. And that's it. Mm. So as you can see, yeah, the bubbles are in, but it's tinted it. And this is what the inks do. Uh, liquids, not pigments. Yeah, they will tint the overall colour and it will give it a nice even tint. Obviously, the more you put in, the stronger the tint. And that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to go here. You can see those bubbles in it as I pour this out. Yeah, and I'll show you what we're going to do about those bubbles in a minute. And there's two sort of air bubbles in that. In fact, I'll talk about that later. Right, we're going to add a bit more pigment. Do another two drops, three drops. Oh, getting adventurous, Mal. And here we go. Now it's a much stronger colour, and we're going to go for that one there. And this is the point where it's still going to sort of hold its crystalline structure. It's still going to be quite hard, should I say? OK, but as we add more pigment, it's going to start sort of losing that and become more sort of rubber. So I've added four drops there to really sort of max this out. And as you can see, really, really dark. Yeah, quite a nice blue, actually. Let's pull that one in there. Yeah, just like that. And then finally, a couple more drops just to really max it out. <laughs> just for this last pour. Now you notice all these bubbles coming to the surface. The reason they're raising so easily and quickly is because we've, we've warmed the fluid up. We've warmed it up. So we'll pour this lot in, into this one. I've got a bit left. Let's see, <laughs> see, let's see how it goes. Eh? There you are. Really max that out, and I just want to wipe that down before it gets everywhere. With it being a watch clip, with it being an ink. Yeah. So really max this out now. This should turn out like rubber because we've taken the balance right off. So let's give it a go, eh? Lovely colour though. There we have it. Okay. And what I'm going to do very quickly is, I'm just, in fact, not very quickly, I'm just going to leave those for a second while I show you the other stuff. Okay. And the reason why I'm leaving them is because I want those air bubbles to come to the top. And that's going to take about 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, which is plenty of time for me to sort of show you the rest so what I'll do is I'll slide that up there 
And in fact, I'll keep it just in camera over on this side for you. Yeah, can you see that? Yeah, because we're going to have another one coming in. Right, so we've got another mold here. Okay, we've got our first lot. And what I've got this time is I've got Citadel model paints. Yeah. Because I want to show you how pigments sort of react. And this is more of a pigment than an ink, to be truthful. The reason being is like it's actual solid bits floating around in a medium. Yeah, you'll see that in a second, hopefully. But I'll open that up. I will get a toothpick as my carrier. I'm going to need a couple of these probably. And what I'm going to do is very quickly dip it in. Yeah. And then dip it in my mix. Now check that out. Do you see how the other one, what you call it? The other one sort of tinted immediately, whereas this is actually dropping particles. And you can actually see the particles as you drop them. Yeah, and as you can see, this is far more opaque. And by that, what I mean is it's blocking the translucence. It's a solid color. Where those are tints, you can still see the bottom. Even with the dark one, you can still see, you know, you can make your way through it. Yeah, with this, this is going to go really opaque and it's going to block out all the detail because this is actually pigments in it. OK, and what I want to show you with this one is basically what effect, you know, the pigments have. Now, we haven't put much in here, to be truthful. Yeah, but it will have an effect on it. So let's pour that one in there. Look at that cherry red. And very quickly, clean it up. And then I'll take that out. Get another one. Go for another dip and really thicken this up now. But check that out. Look at that cherry red. Whee! Splash, splash. And if you notice down here, can you see all these bubbles forming? Now they've naturally collected and rose to the surface and all come together. I'm going to show you something really cool in a minute with those. Right, so let's thicken it up some more. And once again, you can see it actually mixing in in stripes. The pigments from the paint actually going with it. And this is far more solid now. Yeah, that's really sort of opaque. It's really blocking the light coming through. So what I'm going to do very quickly is give it one last stir and then pour the next one. There we go. Now, there's quite a bit left in there, as you can see, but I'm just going to leave that in just like I did with this one. Oh, looks like I've had resin run down the side, so baby wipe. Clean that up. Baby wipes are brilliant at cleaning this stuff up. Yeah, and what I'm going to do is basically I'm just going to leave those to cure. They're going to be my test bits for these. So if I ever want to know if these are ready to touch, I'll touch those. And the other be benefit of doing it that way is that when it comes to actually cleaning these things, cleaning them as they are now is a bit of a pain. If I let them go hard, I can just peel it out as a sheet. So here we have our bubble formed, poured resin. Yeah, and as you can see, that's a normal one. These are the tints. These are the, what you call it, these are the opaques. Now, what I want to do is get rid of these bubbles. Okay. And the way you're going to do that is with carbon dioxide. Now, if you're doing a big project, they use big flame torches, yeah, to burn them off. But for our sort of projects, all we need is a straw. Now, important safety tip here. Remember, this is giving off fumes. Blow down the straw. Don't suck up the straw. Also, remember, it's the tail end of the lung of the air in your lungs that contains carbon dioxide. So your first amount of blowing will blow oxygen on them and it won't do much effect. It's the tail end. So if you blow out a bit first before you blow on them, you'll get more carbon dioxide. Yeah. Now, finally, one other thing. Watch out for little bits of spittle coming down here and mixing with your resin because that will cause splodges. 
So let me show you on these. OK, and very quickly. Yeah, I'll bring this up. I'm going to move the camera a bit closer. Oh, no, I can't. There you are. Move it down to there and I'll do this literally over here for you guys. Yeah, so that's inside. Let me just focus it. Mm -mm. Yeah, hopefully you should be able to see that quite nice now. Yeah, and what I'm going to do is blow most of the air out of my lungs and then carry on. Okay, and now the carbon dioxide is sitting on it, it will start to pop and go and disappear on its own. Yeah, you've got to wait for the carbon dioxide to actually mix in with the resin and actually lower the surface tension of it. Okay, but it will. So I'll blow on this one. So there you have it, guys. What you call it? A couple of little stubborn bubbles, a little bit of moisture in that one where it's blowing a bit too hard, but overall nice and clean. Yeah, and as you can see, yeah, you can already see the tints, and you can see through, and you can see how opaque these pieces are. Now, what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to put them up until they watch they're dry and ready to pop out, which is they reckon about seven seven hours for normal cure in a warm environment. Yeah, but I'm going to leave them overnight, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, because you get far better results. And then what we'll do is we'll pop them out and then we'll look at the pond after that. So see you in just a second for you guys. 24 hours for me. See you in a sec, guys. OK, it's been 24 hours and these are cured now. Now, I should say that this is Envirotex Lite, not Envirotex. It's two different products, but Envirotex is a industrial product. Envirotex Lite is the hobby project product guys but they reckon it takes uh what you call it three days for this stuff to fully cure to fully harden but it's ha it they reckon you can handle it w within about seven eight hours but i like leaving it 24 so let's have a look at it right let's put these what you call it the opaque ones to the side and let's have a look at the tints now there you are guys now these are all hard they're not sticky or anything i have popped them out and put them back in yeah, now straight away, if we pull out the raw Envirotex light, you can take a look. Now you see that frosty in that pattern underneath. Okay, that frosty in that pattern there, that's from what you call it, that's from the texture underneath causing that frosting. If it was put on a completely smooth surface, it would be completely clear through, and it is completely clear through down to the frosting. It's hard. Yeah, there is a little bit of flexibility in it because it hasn't fully cured. So let me show you as I bend it. So you can bend it a little, yeah, because it hasn't fully cured. But it is hard. And you will eventually get to the stage where with this one, you just won't bend it at all. Okay, so that is Envirotex light in its raw form. Okay, and it's good stuff. Used a lot for glossing and sealing things. I'm going to be using it for sealing a photo frame. Here you go. That there is an Envirotex heart. An Envirotex light heart. Yeah, but basically what I'm going to do is I, I mix some black tattoo ink in this and watch call it. And all I'm going to do now is uh, put a photo in, some locks of hair and some gems, seal it over with the, the clear stuff and give it to my wife as a Mother's Day present. But that's what that's about. Right. Let's move that over there. So let's have a look at the tints. Now, if you remember, we slowly put, started putting the tints in and you can see the different sort of translucent effects. Now, as I said, liquids, inks, that sort of stuff, they will cause a tint. They will change the overall color of the Envirotex to a smooth color. And you can see the frosting on that one. Yeah. And then if we pop it up to this one, you can see that the frosting starts to get obscured by the actual tint. And this is where we reckon it'd start compromising. 
Yeah, and it is a little bit more flexible than, you know, this one. But let's carry on. Yeah, there's the next one. And that's a lovely blue, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, but a bit more flexible. And this is because we're adding that pigment into the mix and we've we've taken the mix off. Yeah, onto the really dark one. Yeah, and I must admit, I do like that. I do like that a lot as a colour. Yeah, but I like blues in general. Yeah, but as you... <laughs> That's over there somewhere, guys. But obviously, a lot more flexible than the last one. Okay, and then we go on to the final one. Now, quickly, if I show you from underneath, look at that. You can get some great effects with this stuff. Nice and shiny on the side, but let's show you the flexibility. Look at that. Yeah, and that's because we've we've added more of this, what you call it, this dye into the mix, and we've set off the balance between the hardener and the resin. So when you're mixing stuff in with this stuff, always make sure that, you know, if you want it to be hard, put a touch more hardener in, okay? So that's the translucence. That's caused by the gels, by the liquids, okay? Let's have a look what happened when we mixed in that red gore, okay, which is a pigment, okay? I know it's not dry, but it's a pigment suspended in a medium. And so when it mixes with the Envirotex, what you get is that. Now, as you can see with that, it's sort of changed the opacity. Yeah, whereas this has changed the tint, okay? You can still see light through it. I mean, hell, even with that one, you can still see light through it. You can still see the bricks, etc. With this one, you can't, yeah? And that's because pigments change the opacity, the amount of light that can get through it. And so if we go up to what you call it, to this one, which was the heavy one, look at that. Yeah, but as you can see, no light whatsoever through it. Yeah, but it is a little bit more flexible than this one. Yeah, and I don't know if you can see it, but if I go really close with that, let's turn it over. Let's see if you can see it that way. Right, just let me very quickly mess around with my autofocus so you can actually see this. Come on, focus in. Yeah, there we go. Now if I quickly turn that over. What I'm hoping you can see, and I don't know if you can, is there's actually pigments. And you can actually physically see the pigments, splodges of pigments in that. Okay, you can't in this one because it's too dense. But this one's just to that sort of cusp between going translucent, because you can just slightly see my finger there, so I can see the pigments in that. But guys, that is Envirotex. Yeah, that is Envirotex in its raw form. That's with various different pigments. Remember, you can use food colorings. I like tattoo inks. Mess around, experiment with the Envirotex light. And that's with, what you call it? That's with pigments. So that's with tints. That's with pigments. Okay. Right, let me knock that autofocus off. There we go. Right, the next thing we're going to do is, what you call it? Put these to one side. And actually look at the practical application of this stuff. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm very quick quickly going to mix up some more Envirotex light and we'll be putting it on this piece here okay so let's go to that so guys I've mixed up what you call it uh, 60 millimeters of Envirotex look at the lovely bubbles and what I'm going to do now is show you the practical application of this stuff and what I mean by that is actually putting it on a terrain piece now, this is the pond that I've been working on. Uh, you've seen it in my other videos with the blue watch color, and it's quite stylized. Because this is going to be the final pour, yeah, I wanted to sort of up the game on it a bit more, because this is going to be my pond, my gaming table. So I wanted to just make it a little bit more realistic, and don't worry about any of what I've done on this, yeah? I'll show you when I cover swamps, yeah, when we do the swamp tutorial. But as a quick overview, you know, I've changed the bottom to watch color more greens with it. A touch of dark blue in there. I've added some watch clip, some flockers, algae. I can't remember who said it was algae. Uh, was it Gareth? I'm not sure. In one of my chill chat and build sessions. I've got some different reads here. These are from Hornby and these are far more realistic. The reason they're more realistic is because they're actually real plants rather than the synthetic ones, which are these. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've distressed the grass and that sort of stuff and added a bit more texture and colour to it. You know, and overall, I think it looks quite good. But I don't want clear Envirotex. See how the bubbles are all rising to the top there? Lots of little bubbles. Good, good mix. Right. 
I don't want clear Envirotex on it. What Envirotex light? I don't want clear Envirotex light on it. What I want is what do you call it? Uh, a greeny sludgy colour. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some inks to this. Okay. To see if I can change the colour a bit. So let's move that to one side. Bring this in and let me introduce you to my inks. Now you can use food colourings, you can use artist inks, you can use all sorts of things to mix with, mix with this and experiment. But my wife is a tattooist and she has absolutely tons of old tattoo inks that she can't use because they're out of date. Yeah, but they're perfectly good for this sort of stuff. You know, they may not be good for putting under people's skin, but they make great water terrain. The benefit I found of using tattoo inks is they're completely inert. They don't react with anything, okay, because they're designed to go un into the skin. The other thing is they blend really well. They're very fine. So what I'm going to do is I've got my Envirotex, and we're going to have a little play for a couple of minutes and see if we can get a nice sludge colour. So drop of bottles. One drop of green. Come on, just one. Are you coming out? There you go, one drop of green. Now that's one drop of green in there. Yeah, let's give it a mix. Do you see how overpowering that one drop of green has been? How green this has suddenly become. It's gone through the entire Envirotex, like most inks do, and it's tinted it with a nice sort of subtle green but I want to darken that up so let's add a bit of black yeah one drop of black okay so that's just one drop of black in it and let's give that a mix in see what we get I believe we're getting darker but it's still too transparent for me so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another drop of both in. One drop of green, one drop of black. Yeah, and let's give that a spin. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. Whoa! Sorry guys, I just got my head over it and I got the fumes. That's not nice stuff. Remember, well ventilated area, wear gloves. If you get any of this in your eyes, your mouth, or anything like that, it's, you know, head for A&E. Yeah, what do we reckon to that? Do we reckon that's sort of sludgy enough? I think it is. I think especially with it going over the dark green, it'll look really good. So, at the end of the day, the one problem with Envirotex is you get one poor, guys. So, this is the colour I'm picking for it. We'll see if it works out when we're... Ooh, maybe a bit darker, actually, when I look at the thinner resin. A bit darker. Let's put another drop in. Oh, two drops of black. Uh-oh. Oh, that's really darkened it up. See it now? Now this I actually reckon is even better. You ready? Right, when it comes to pouring this stuff, don't worry about the air bubbles. We sort that after it's poured. Yeah, just go easy. Don't get it on any of your sort of flock or anything. Watch out for drips. Okay, but generally, just pour it on. Now this is where we find out how much I've got and whether it will do the job. 60 mils should be fine for this. Now you notice I'm not going completely up to the edges. Yeah, what I don't want to risk to do is filling it too much and let that go up to the edges and have that meniscus effect. Yeah, that sort of bowling at the edge. I want it to be as flat as possible. You say that? Those, but you should have done it on a flat surface. Oh, we're getting close to the edge there. Yeah, keep it coming.
now it's seeping towards that side because of the way my desk is slanted so what I'll do is very quickly I'll just pull it back this way and let gravity just drag those bits in then what I'll do is get a cocktail stick I see it slowly rolling towards that side what I'll do is I'll pull this into this edge lift it up a bit get my motion this way because once it's actually joined to the edge it'll stick to it yeah so this will slowly push these right up to that edge do the same over here remember this stuff is really self led leveling so I don't have to worry about it being too full at one side and not full enough at the other it will sort itself out as it cures okay there's very little reduction with this stuff as well oh don't want it flowing over so let's drag it into here remember they reckon quarter of an sorry an eighth of an inch what you call it depth for this stuff which is this is almost spot on okay I think that has covered it all have it yes 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 okay let's just quickly take that bit out because I don't need it I'll put that over there right guys there we have it there is our Invitex pool now I've got a little bit left there and what I'm very quickly going to do while that just lets all the bubbles sort of rise to the surface and lets itself settle is I'm going to get these Hearst Arts molds and quickly waste not want not pull these in here resin is great for what you call it for detailed work because it really holds the detail and flows better than plaster so I tend to use my spares just to fill in moulds like these so I'll slide that over to one side yeah then I'll get another one use the rest of the resin and then finally yeah in this door if there's enough I don't think there's going to be enough so what we'll do is we will have I'll leave that in for cleaning right so yeah all I've done there is very quickly just poured a few into these molds and I'll scrape them off after watch after the video so let me just put those over there guys so they're out of the way sorry about that guys I just didn't want to waste it you know right so here we have our what you call it our Envirotex light poured piece and you can see all the bubbles yeah and what we're going to do now is we're going to take uh what you call it, straw and remember that i said that carbon dioxide will get rid of these bubbles so what we're going to do is very quickly okay guys there you have the watch call it the blown on pond and straight away you can sort of see that you can slightly see through it you can see that blots and that watch got algae there and it's got a nice dark look to it it's nice and even yeah I've just got I thought I had a hair in it but I don't I can't see it now there's still lots of tiny little bubbles and this will only blown on in another five minutes but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this I'm going to put it on a flat surface and then I'm going to cover it over with a clean plastic Tupperware tub yeah to make sure no dust falls on it while it's setting okay so you'll see it when it comes back guys see you in a sec okay guys it's been 24 hours and this has cured as you can tell now it'll be another what you call it 48 hours before it cures completely but it's easily hand handable now and if you're building up layers you could pour another layer on top of this now if you wanted to okay because all the gas has sort of escaped and it's just hardening now a uh, couple of things just take a look at yeah the colors worked out well you can see how it's it's captured that what you call it that flock in there and held it giving the impression of algae now there's a little bit of bleeding here 
Yeah, you can see a little bit of shininess if I bring it up close. Yeah, just there. Okay, and what that is, is it's the, the flock acting in a capillary action. And what that basically means is when there's lots of little holes made by flock, like imagine cracks, yeah, it will suck the resin up into it. So you need to be aware of stuff like that. Okay, it's an easy fix. It's just a bit of watered down PVA on top. That'll mat it out and then just a little sprinkling of some fresh flock. Yeah, because this is dry now, the flock won't stick to this at all. Uh, so there you have it guys now once this is fully cured you know you can file it you can polish it you can do all those sort of things nail files or very very fine jeweler's sandpaper works really well on it okay uh, those two doors that I poured are there and as you can see yeah it holds detail really well still a bit flexible as you can see it hasn't fully cured yet but it will okay uh, lay them flat and no doubt you'll see these in another video in the future sometime. Uh, I always cast up loads of spare ones just so much that I've got them for when I need them to build and, you know, put on foam board houses or Hearst Art stuff. But there you have it. So, guys, that is Envirotex Resin. We have covered what it is, the safety elements, how you mix it, common problems. We've looked at adding uh, liquid tints. We've looked at add changing the opacity with pigments. Uh, and we've done a practical application of it. So there should be no reason why now that you you don't know what to do with this stuff. And the effects are great. I mean, look at it, guys. Yeah, that's great. End of. So quick cameras off. Okay. Right, guys. It is Mothering Sunday. So as always, yeah, I'm busy, busy, busy. I just want to finish this video off. Uh like if you like it, throw comments down below guys, if you've got anything to add to this tutorial, if I've missed anything, throw it in boys, if you've got any questions, any experiences, throw those in as well, you know, it really helps, you know, I always answer my comments. Finally, if you like this sort of stuff and you're new to the channel, subscribe, big subscribe link coming up here now. And if you're watching on something that doesn't do annotations, this just looks stupid. But subscribe, go to the link, subscribe, you know what you're doing. Finally, guys, yeah, if you really want to help me out, share this with your friends. If you've got a terrain builder in your group, show this to him. Game building some ponds, eh? In the meantime, have a great day, guys. I'll see you soon. All the best. Terra.